Greetings, peoples. Welcome back. Inquisition. You know, I was going to just skip this all together as far as making a video, because all I'm going to be doing here is crafting and leveling, so if that sounds boring, you might want to skip this one. But uh, I was like, you know, I mean, if, you know, if I'm doing a Let's Play here, you know, i got to practice uh, some smithing. Go ahead and uh, fine-tune my gear, uh, distribute my best gear amongst my party members and sell the rest. Upgrade some stuff if I can, make some upgrades, all that kind of good stuff. And I was like, oh, I'll share it. You know, that's all part of the game. Now, this is a big part of the game, actually. Sometimes your equipment can make you and break you. Nothing replaces a good party build, but uh, still having having good equipment definitely helps. And I have some schematics here. I've, I've bought a few, picked up a few. Make different sets of armor and uh, different upgrades. I'm looking at upgrades here. And I, I want to make a note. You have apprentice armor and apprentice coat arms, okay? Two different kinds of gauntlets for a, uh, a mage set of armor. Now, there's a point later, uh, based on the ingredients you use and stuff, where you can make um, certain kinds of sets of armor suitable for classes that normally couldn't wear them like heavy armor for a mage or something like that. And I think it involves using silverite and stuff. And You know, we'll, we'll take a, a good look at that later when the uh, crafting becomes a little bit more complex. But uh, for right now, we have, you know, basic suits for everybody. You know, you have light armor, medium armor, heavy armor. And then you have certain upgrades like arms and leggings. And there'll be different kinds of arms and leggings. And what I like to do is go in, uh, bring up a schematic, just pick one, and then basically scroll through the different ingredients I can put in that and see what it has to offer. And you'll notice some schematics um, offer different stuff. Like if you have two different schematics for heavy armor, say one is a uh, heavy mail and the other one is uh, a heavy coat, you know, a defender coat or something like that. And you scroll through your, your uh, stuff, one of them may offer a lot of defensive stuff, like uh, melee defense, um, extra health, and things like that. And the other one may offer more offensive buffs, like extra strength, or maybe even extra constitution, which is more of a defensive stat. It improves your, uh, it gives you extra health, and it also improves your melee defense. Constitution does for you, but uh, you can kind of choose back and forth. So, you know, they're not necessarily geared solely for one thing or, or for the other, but one can benefit an offensive style player like my main character, you know, two-handed warrior. I'm more of a DPS, off tank, I guess you could call it, whatever. Um, whereas, say, Cass or Blackwall, I would want them to have um, all the extra constitution, health, melee defense, magic defense that um, that I can put on there. So, you know, it, it, keep in mind um, the character you're making it for. And so it's not just the suit of armor or equipment, but it's also the add-on. Like, you have male legs and you also have coat legs. And they'll offer different uh, benefits. One may offer more, more melee or physical resistance. Uh, range defense or something like that, and the other one may offer things like uh, magic defense, you know, electrical resistance, cold resistance, and stuff like that. So one may be more of a physically oriented, one may be more uh, elemental oriented, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, what are you looking for? And keep in mind maybe the either the mission you're going to go on or what you think you're going to face in the long run, or just what the play style of that character is. Like me, I'm, I'm not one that I really want to uh, be so anal as to change equipment for every single thing I'm about to go do, but I do keep in mind how my character plays, and I say, well, we'll get by if we do this. I think my party build is strong enough to um, basically override any any weaknesses I might have going into specific battles. Like, I go up against all fire, fire-based fire monsters. Well, I don't just go deck out every single member of my party with all fire-based stuff, go fight those few monsters, come back, and then switch to something else type thing. I, I, don't, I don't personally play like that. Um... Unless I do know I'm going up against a fire-based dragon or something specifically, then, you know, yeah, I'll probably buff my gear a little bit. You know, I'll want some fire defense and I'll want, say, you know, some frost enchantments on my weapons if if I have it. Something like that. But um, other than that, I pretty much just kind of roll with whatever my play style is. Defense for my tanks, offense for my DPS, um, resistances for my mages, whether it be range defense or various magical resistances, things that might hit them from range. Because I'm going to assume that most of the time, they're not going to be, you know, taking uh, melee damage. Uh, my scouts, maybe. You know, that's, that's that's feasible for my scouts. They might get in there in the midst of it. But uh, for my uh, archers and my mages, I like them to have resistances from ranged attacks. Whether it be magic or arrows or whatever. Anyway, so uh, I did make uh, Sarah a coat. 
And I think gave her a little magic resistance. I did put one upgrade on there and uh, distributed the rest of the gear to whoever could use it. I'm going to keep that. That is uh, that F that Ferelden Medallion of Service is something you need to fill a requisition. Probably when we get to uh, oh, what is it? The Hallow Hallow Fallowmire? Is that what it's called? Fallowmire? There's another area we'll unlock later. Little uh, little quest, little mission we have to go go do there. And it's a really creepy, nasty place, actually. But uh, there, it asks for medallions of service, and there's another thing. It's like a history tome or something like that. Anyway, so I'll keep that in my back pocket, but everything else I'm going to get rid of. All right, now weapons, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you know, what do you value most if, um, if your mage is um, defense-minded? Uh, barrier-minded, stuff like that, I would recommend willpower over magic because the, the larger the mana pool the, and the, the better the mana rege regeneration, the better because that mage's responsibility is to uh, keep the party covered first and then, you know, dish out the pain second, uh, which any mage can do with their staff. You know, their, their, uh, their attack rate or um, their fire rate is going to be pretty high. But, um... If you're an offensive mage, such as your main character, your your player character, uh, him or herself, then perhaps magic would be the way to go, just to add a little extra punch to your spells and stuff. But um, either way, each up to their own. I just you know, these these are just the basics of crafting here. But it still it does emphasize the point to uh, keep in mind what your party, what each member of your party is specializing in in, in gear your equipment as well as your skills to that one particular job or role that your party member is going to play and then uh, you know on any difficulty um, your party wants when it's working as a machine when it has a lot of synergy then it's it's going to be really effective and better equipment should should all enhance that uh, there's nothing like extra critical chance for a rogue who's already had who already may have a really high critical chance and then is buffing the party with extra critical chance also like Varric for example then you put an extra, I don't know, 12, 20, 25% critical chance on a particular um, uh, upgrade on his crossbow, Bianca. And next thing you know, just about everything he does is a critical. And uh, almost everything the rest of your party's doing is a critical too, it seems like. And it just gets brutal. But, uh, you know, if your skills and your equipment are all working together. Alright, let's go ahead and level. Let's see, I have a choice here. Um, I could do extra damage to enemies that are knocked down, which I really love that because it's, it's a passive. It's all the time. Then you have this, a little extra guard when you uh, successfully block and slash and attack. And I'll go ahead and pick that one. But there's also um, my other option was combat roll and the upgrade to combat roll, which removes debilitating effects. And there is a demon coming up, which is going to like to not only cast terror on your teammates and do ridiculous damage with his almost instant attacks, but he also um, slows you. And when you're slowed down, you're really, really open to a follow-up attack. And the combat roll with the upgrade can can help with that a lot, at least for my character. And it's, it's, it's it was kind of a toss-up, but um, usually go with an upgrade first. Uh, but, you know, I, I say that loosely because um, passives are always good, too. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I don't know. Vivian's next skill there is going to be the one where her barriers are 50% stronger down there to the right. But I'm not taking her with me, so I can afford to just spend that skill right there. Now, Solus, instead of unlocking that right now, um, since I'm taking him with me, I'm going to come down here in this middle passive. Not only is it going to increase his willpower, his, uh, his pool, but it's also going to uh, reduce all of his cooldown times and um, increase his uh, mana regen. And then Varric, I'm not taking him with me either, but any passives are good. Anything to increase dexterity or cunning. Iron Bull, he's not going either. Doesn't so much matter. I probably won't be taking him anywhere with me for a while. Matter of fact, there's two skills down from that one right there. Um, the very next one is uh, to do bonus damage to any enemy that's taunted. From all sources, and include, that means from all your party members. So, if Bull taunts somebody, all party members, including me, do extra damage to that enemy. Well, if I've got that same skill picked, being a warrior myself, then we double 
the damage bonus to all taunted enemies all the time, from all sources, including mages, rogues, whatever. Alright, so I'll uh, turn that stuff in. It didn't show it, but I, I know we got some influence for that. Of course, go pick up any missions I've already done and pick a few more, if I can. And have those working while I'm off questing. Has Cassandra spoken to you about my new recruits? They are not your recruits, Commander. They're ours. At your service. Sweet. Get somebody out there making money. There we go. Go do your thing. Alright, I guess we're ready to do this. Let's start this. Champions of the Just. This is kind of a, a point of no return. The Templars must help us close the breach. The Order was founded to fight magic. We must first convince the Lord Seeker to bring the Templars out of exile. We've received word from a knight recruit. They gather at Therenfall Redoubt. It has been vacant for decades. Why go there? We must approach the Lord Seeker again to get anywhere. We can ask him then. If we want the Templars to be useful, we need them under control. To lure them into obedience, we must become a more tempting ally. If it's status the Lord Seeker seeks, the Inquisition will approach him after allying with the noblest houses in Orlais. They'll come with us to Therenfall and demand the Templars help close the breach. You believe that will work? Even the Lord Seeker would find it difficult to ignore so many nobles on his doorstep. Yes, especially when led by the Herald of Andraste. <laughs> and, uh, why is that? <laughs> why do I have to go? Is it my good looks you need, or my winning smile? Rumors you were saved from the Fade by Andraste have grown legion among the Templars. We've done our part to encourage them. A herald with a few companions may be dismissed, easily set aside. That same herald returning with noble support will be reconsidered, as will the power of the Inquisition. Makes sense to me. Isn't there the slightest chance the Lord Seeker will see my arrival as a threat? Before, I would have thought he was a man of reason. Now, I could not say. With respect. After his appearance in Valroyo, hang what the Lord Seeker thinks. We do not need the Lord Seeker. We need his Templars, with or without his approval. The breach will not wait for our differences to settle. No doubt. Good news. Several noble or legion houses will petition the Templars to help us stop the breach. Lord Dabernash will approach you. Mm, there we go. Level 4 through 7, we're level 7. But his gossip. It's fair game. Although I think if we were level 8, everything would be leveled with us, but, uh... Alright, be that as it may, let me pick my squad. These are the ones who I think are going to like my decisions the most, and we will head out. And that's where we will begin on the next one. Champions of the Just. Thanks for watching, guys. Being patient, hanging out. If you want to subscribe, hit that button over my head. Be notified when I upload more videos. For more Inquisition, click the top box. And for all my videos, click the bottom box, and y'all take care. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.